this is an area where the community members got together and created a pollinator native plant garden. There are some non-natives in here that were planted by some of the community members, but for the most part, they are uh, almost all natives. And some of the non-natives will be removed and replaced with some other natives. And as you can see, Batisa, there's uh, quite a bit of it in here, almost too much in a small space. They get big plants, but they're great plants uh, for this type of garden. Leatris, uh, some simple, simple trichum, more of that. Quite a bit of that. He's got, they've got uh, quite a bit of milkweed in here. Swamp milkweed, butterfly weed, and also some uh, just common milkweed, which is the most uh, prevalent in these areas. Yeah, you see the pollinators are all over these plants. I can see them just humming around, particularly the flowering one. Quite a few sedges. Yeah, wild petunia, virilla. And uh, here's a bone set. Looks like a tall bone set. Mostly honeybees on there. They're, they're not native, but they're pollinators, I guess. People love the honeybees. But this does serve a lot of native bees as well. Then I planted an oak tree in here. It's kind of cool. We got more sedges. And uh, got quite a bit of the indigo. Could probably be replaced in a small space like this with something else, a lot more variety but uh, the guy that maintains this loves those plants. So that's up to him. So yeah, some uh, triloba, Rebecca triloba. Now you've got some verbena in here. Yeah, looks like some wild, wild quinine in there as well. And, uh, and some butterfly bush, which will be removed. It hasn't been invasive around here. That particular plant around here is not invasive. It really doesn't creep up. It's a little bit not real welcoming as far as climate goes, but better safe than sorry and get rid of it and replant something else. And a lead plant in there. Uh, silphiums. Only one type of silphium that I see in here. Get more uh, liatris. Some echinacea. I think that's pearly everlasting. I'm not sure. And uh, again, more stuff. It's pretty packed in here. It could be uh, added to quite a bit, and we will do that. We've got the plugs. We've had four months of really, really dry conditions where things were almost at the point of dying, and then we'd get some rain. Uh, natives are real resilient. A real patch of silphium in there. A lot of bone set, a lot of this aster in here. Uh, that's the stuff that really takes off. These things, you spread the seeds around, you get these things. This is a good seed source, this thing right here for us. It allows us to be able to spread these seeds in the general area. And uh, the more you have, the better. Yeah, these types of gardens are really hard to come by around here. Because the uh, municipalities really don't like the fact that you're going to do it. They're afraid it's going to become a weed bed, which in some cases they're correct. And also, too, really people don't have an idea what they're doing. But this particular one is uh, relatively well maintained. This year it's been just let to go. And more over there. It's got a pretty good stretch. And there's some uh, pagoda dogwood in there, some service berry. And uh, it looks like some hop tree talea species. More bone set. That's really a vigorous plant. That thing will pop up everywhere. A lot of, uh, right there nodding on it. You can see it's kind of falling down and uh, struggled. Uh, Canadensis solidagos. It's about three types of solidago species in here, maybe four. That's something we're going to add to. We don't have any stiff goldenrod, which would be a, a nice plant to put in here, but that's not a solidago. You just call it goldenrod. Again, a lot, big patch of common milkweed. And uh, back there is that the sweet joe pie weed. And throughout this area, it's another area that's along the river stretch that is uh, really starting to come along with those. There's quite a few plants. That we're collecting all the seeds, spread it all in the area. And this area, you know, the, the seeds will drop. They've been in here for a while. But we're gonna add plugs. And uh, we don't harvest all the seeds, but we'll, we will for the most part if they can be used somewhere else. And we'll, we'll make sure we replace plants if need be. Again, simple trichum species. And Bumblebee really liking that one. And uh, 
really, really showy plant. And these uh, asters are real prevalent around here. Echinacea, a lot of hyssop. He's got quite a few of it. The thing about this plant for us around here is like it, it, it'll pop up for a few years. If it doesn't have competition, it gets big and it grows. It can get crowded out very easily. And uh, there's some primrose in here, which is a very common plant around here, but very reliable. And yeah, some yeah, some service berry back there that the city had actually given gave to them to plant that was last year and that's really unheard of around here in municipalities to be that cooperative with people but these folks have really developed a relationship with them um, that I, I don't have and uh, more solidago species in there a lot of common and yeah, there's some uh, blue stem goldenrod that we've actually had really good luck germinating uh, from seed and, and growing in pots and around here it's a it's a rare plant it's called a special concern plant close to point of extinction due to the buckthorn and other invasives and just uh, encroachment on habitat that gromwell unusual uh, to see that in any kind of a garden but you know right now it's falling down because of the drought it's real stressful but the plant is actually uh, very ornamental it's a great ornamental plant the flowers not so much the foliage and shape more so down there yeah, it looks like some rue and then some other types of geums so quite a bit of diversity in here and a good seed source for us down there that's cleaned out with a buckthorn uh, approximately two years ago and we've worked around a little bit and we just recently planted 300 plugs down there and we're going to plant another 400 so total of 700 there's some species that are growing in there that are reliable so that's a positive but we're really going to add some diversity in that spot and also allow us to collect more seed and spread it around and the difference is like this is a city property and they've been able to do this uh, because they built a relationship with them and the thing is right next to it is a different jurisdiction and that's county you can see where it stops these folks would have kept planting stuff down here and cutting these things down but uh, this is all buckthorn right here just a wall of it in the back of it we've been working on a little bit but uh, but but huge huge amount of buckthorn and there's a woodland sunflower with a little patch of that going in here. That's a very reliable plant around here. You'll find it's sprinkled around. And uh, we try to introduce that as much as possible in certain areas just because of its reliability. But as you can see, a ton of buckthorn right here. That's a wall. Now, this, this area here could be like what we just saw, even maybe more shrubs, you know, as a base versus uh, pollinators. But, you know, shrubs with trees and pollinators along the whole edge once you get rid of the buckthorn to be able to compete with the buckthorn. But that's, the, the, that conversation is, is revolting. It's, it's so hard to even do anything with these folks. They'll allow you to clean up some buckthorn, but um, you gotta be real careful on what you talk to them because the more you talk to them, the less you can do. But regardless of that, this is a nice source of seed for us. It's a nice little pollinator garden in a suburban area. And, uh, it's coming along very well and we will plant quite a bit of species we have about 30 more species we're going to be introducing in here we we do more however uh you have to kind of remove some of the bigger uh the ones that are really uh, taking up a lot of room particularly the uh, canadian goldenrod we want to keep it we, we're not anti-canadian goldenrod but it does limit the species, particularly if you're looking for pollinator, nectar, and uh, may, it's not providing that. So it's kind of nice to have that balance. So if you have limited space, you kind of have to balance that out.